And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And I, I would have that verse in my mind, and I'm going, well, you know, Lord, I, I know you, you know, you help me pay my bills, and and uh, we got a little money to eat out on every now and then. But God, I, it, it doesn't seem like the real uh, thing in my heart, which is not money, but it's ministry, it's it's helping people, it's preaching, and and trying to make some kind of difference in this world. That's what was really in my heart, and I, I said, God, it's not prospering. It doesn't look like to me it's prospering. And um, so then God began to deal with me about things and so on, and um, I'm going to read some scripture, and I, I just kind of got four categories here very quickly, and this is to the man that uh, messaged me on Facebook. Uh, this is primarily for you, but then it would go to anybody else out there who is running into difficulties like this. And and I like, there's something he said that uh, I, I like it. It sounds like he's blaspheming, but he's not. Um, here's what he said. I really don't understand God. I love God, but I don't understand him. Now, I'll tell you this. Number one, we realize that God's ways are way up here and our ways are way down here. And God said, as far as, that, as far as the heaven is from the earth, that's how far my ways are from your ways. That's why I spent three days in my office writing stupid ideas down. I did not come up with the Watchman video broadcast. I did not come up with that idea. God said, I want you to do this, and that's what I did. And so it was his way being above my ways. And I just decided, God, I don't, I mean, I don't care what you do. But God, you're the one that's going to have to do it. And I'm going to get into that. The first thing that you'll learn when your back is up against the wall and you have no other place to turn to, you do, and these are simple things. If you think that I'm going to give you motivational speaking, seven steps, um, self-help. The Bible is not a self-help manual. It's not. It does not tell you how you can benefit yourself, how you can, well, let me, let me back up. It does not tell you how you can help yourself. It tells you how God can and will and wants to help you if you want him to. But if God gave us all these great things on how we could do this for ourselves, what good is the cross? And some people in their view of Christianity relegate the cross only to, well, that's what saves me and puts me in heaven. But as far as fixing my marriage or raising my children or problems at work or depression or whatever it is, the cross is not the answer to them. They're, they're doing what Joel Osteen has taught them so well and Joyce Myers is that they're looking within themselves for the answers and it's not there. It never will be. The answer is the cross of Jesus Christ. And uh, I've, I've told people many times before, I think the book of Psalms is a medicine cabinet. And um, I, I've, I have taken many doses in my life. The first thing you learn, and, this is, and you don't even have to learn this. This comes automatically. Um, when, I was, when, when God broke me free of the electrical current that had bound me underneath my house, I didn't have to read a manual on how to cry out. I didn't have to go to an advanced training seminar. I didn't have to read Joel's book on how to have a successful life. I didn't do anything like that. It was an automatic thing. When we are in danger, when we are in peril, when we are lo I've been lost in the woods before as a child, and you know what I did? I cried out. 
Listen to what the Bible says. Psalm 3, verse 1. When he, uh, a Psalm of David, when he fled from Absalom, his son. Lord, how they are increased that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. He cried out. I mean, he went, God, help. He said he cried out with his voice. And I, I don't, I'm not one of these that believe that you have to name it and proclaim it and speak it in order for God to hear you. I don't believe that. I think God knows your thoughts. I think God knows the intents of your heart without you physically saying anything. I go to bed at night and I try to pray myself to sleep, but I don't lay there going, now, dear God, please bless my wife sitting over there. She would, that would drive her nuts if I did that. But he said he cried out with his voice, Psalm 18, 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, and he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. And you stop and think about this. The cry of your heart carried all the way from planet Earth, all the way up, if I were to use Mormon ideology, up to the planet Cobol. Isn't that where God supposedly came from? And that's not real. But your cry went from this earth all the way up to the highest heaven. That, that's a good God. It's not that we cried that loud. It's this that God hears that well. Psalm 22, 4. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. You know what you find out here? And this is Psalm 22. This is Christ on the cross. You know what you find out here? That you go back, you know, I'll tell you what's good to do. Go back and read stories of how God's people prevailed. Go back and read stories about how God's people had turned their back on God. And God, go read the book of Judges. How God's people turned their back on God. And yet when they were under oppression by the Philistines or the Moabites, they cried out unto God. And God sent them a Savior. And that's what he's talking about here. Our fathers cried out unto thee, and you saved them. Go read stories of how God saves even the worst, most vile people, how God saved them. Psalm 30, verse 2, O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. You don't need to go see Benny Hinn for healing. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. You know what depression feels like? feels like you're in a grave. feels like you're down in a hole somewhere and you can't get out. Psalm 31, verse 22, For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. I've been there. I have thought at times that there was no way God was ever going to help me ever again. I've, I've made too many mistakes. I've committed too many sins. And by the way, let me throw this at everybody. God doesn't help you based upon your personal righteousness. If that were the case, he would not help anybody. Go study the famous people in the Bible. Go study Abraham. Ask yourself, was Abraham a sinner? Yes. He was a liar. Go study Sarah. On the very day that she laughed and lied about laughing to God's face, he blessed her. What was the spiritual condition of, of Jacob when he went in and received Isaac's blessing? He was lying through his teeth. What was the spiritual condition of Samson when he took the iron gates and laid them on his shoulders and prevailed against the Philistines? He was in bed with a harlot. And all through this, I'm not saying go out and, and shack up with somebody so God will bless you. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you is, is that God gives us his blessings not because of what we do, but because of who we are. We are his creation. We are his children. And God, now, if, if you commit a sin and you're a son of God, God will take a rod and whoop the fire out of you. And it'll hurt, too. I always thought it was funny when my kids say, Dad, that hurt. Well, you're right, it hurt. I intended it to. But anyway, I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. And see, this is from a guy. I, he's, now listen to this now. 
I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. You know what that? You know how Joel Osteen would see that, and Joyce Myers, and all this other crowd. You know how they would see that. He simply doesn't have enough faith to get God to do what he wants him to do. He doesn't have enough faith. And so that's why God's not doing anything, because you don't have enough faith. And here is David saying, I'm cut off from thine eyes. God, you don't even see me anymore. And yet, nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. I am so, I am so sick of the world's witchcraft theology moving into churches and putting people under this kind of bondage, telling them that if they want anything from God, they have to perform, they have to have this super mondo positive mental image of everything that they want, or God cannot create it. That is the stupidest, most blasphemous thing that I think I've, uh, that I'm hearing right now. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it's biblically wrong. Uh, verse 23, O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Mm -mm -mm. So that's number one, you cry out to God. Number two, yield unto God. Yield. Okay? You know what yield is? Um, it's when you pull up to an intersection and somebody has the right of way and you yield. In fact, I'll give it like this. In the the rules of the road in America is that at a four-way stop, and I say America because I've been to Nairobi and there is no such thing. You go to a four-way stop, and they don't have four-way stops in England here. they got those stupid roundabouts. You just keep going round and round and round and round and round. You go to a four-way stop. The rule of the road is, I learned this when I was 16 years old, that if you get to the intersection first, you have the right of way, or in the case of a tie, it goes to the person to the right. And I have, when I'm in a good mood and I feel like being a nice guy, pull up to the intersection, I know that I have the right of way, I know that I, I have rights to move on through the intersection, but I will look at the person sitting over there and I'll say, go on now, go on. Have a nice day. You know what I'm doing? I'm yielding my rights. And I'll tell you something. As soon as you learn how to yield your rights and quit thinking of everything that you think you have a right to, uh, the guy that wrote me on Facebook, he had it right. He said, you know what I deserve? I deserve hell and I deserve it hot. And anything, I don't, listen, I don't care if you have the most miserable existence on planet Earth. If you die and go to heaven, You've got it made, brother. Okay, and, I, and there's, we've realized there's very little that we actually have to complain about, but we do complain a lot. So number one, cry out. Number two, yield. Psalm 34:11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. When you hearken unto God, that means you're listening. Okay, God. Now listen to this. Now, a lot of times God will bring you in this place so He can, so you'll listen. We don't listen to God the way we should. And he will bring situations about where we will listen to him, and we'll do it his way. That's yielding. Psalm 81:13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. That's yielding to the ways of God. Romans 6:13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. And I'll throw this in here. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm telling you, not only does the Bible say it and I believe it, but I'm telling you that it works. Let me say this, too. You know what God's righteous, you know, what it's, you know when it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, number one, I believe absolutely in the commandments, the laws of God, the ways of God, they're holy and they're right. Absolutely. What I do not believe is that you and I, by performing these righteous acts, that we merit the blessing or the, um, the hand of God laid upon us. We do not merit that by doing right things. When I see, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you know what I see in that? The righteousness of God that is imputed to us as believers in the cross of Jesus Christ. Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and not our own self-righteousness, but His righteousness. And when you do that, all these things shall be added unto you. When you 